Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a flashback beta nymph, which is a subset of the blue-winged olive, or also known as BWOs. Um, even the beta nymphs are a group of nymphs that range from pale olive to brown, and from size 14 down to 24. So for today we're going to tie our fly on a size 18 TMC 206 BL. Uh, we're going to use super fine dubbing, piece of fine copper wire, and perfect hatch A dot thread in black. And we're going to want to cut back on extra thread wraps in the smaller sizes. So here's a, um, it's either came from India or China. It was a neck hackle that I bought many years ago, and it was sold as dark blue done. It's got some great color, good fibers, and um, been using it for a long time. I haven't really put a dent in it. So let's get our hook in the vise, get the uh, thread started. And I'm learning to leave a little bit of room up front to kind of give me a stopping point so I uh, minimize the uh, times that I crowd the, the eye of the hook. And we'll come back to just behind the point, and that's where I want to start in my tail. So that's a spade hackle off of that neck I showed you. And I peeled that off the side, grabbed some of the longer fibers, little bundle there, and uh, we're going to pull them back to length. And as I'm realizing I'm going to wrap down around the bend a little bit, I pull them back a little further to, uh, to get the length of the tail. Okay, we'll come back, wind back to the front, and snip off the excess. And we're going to rib this fly with uh, that fine or extra fine copper wire. Now, if I had a very fine, darker color, maybe a brown wire or even a black, um, that may work well as also. I originally, and I'll show you the picture at the end, um, had a plan to use copper colored crystal flash and double it up and twist it and use that for the rib. And in the end it didn't twist and it looked more gold than copper. So it looks more like some variant of a hair's ear, uh, gold ribbed hair's ear than it does uh, what I intended. So, but I'm pretty sure it'll fish well also. So here we're, uh, um, dobbing, of course, the most boring part of fly tying videos. And we'll work our way back so that our dubbing starts uh, just in front of the tail. I think I could have done a little better job there um, getting a taper. That The body starts uh, rather abruptly. And this is a lot smaller than it looks on camera, so... Um, in hindsight, I think I could have paid a little more attention to getting a smooth and, and tapered body, abdomen. But all in all, this uh, this fly should just fish fine. So there we trimmed off the excess. You can see we kind of peeled it back carefully off the thread and snipped it. The, the little butts sticking up there won't be a problem. We're going to cover those up. So I added a half hitch, and I want to use the rotary feature of the vise to... Um, wind the rib. We're in the far side, so we're going to come underneath first so we don't jostle the tail. And four or five wraps here, I think, is what we're uh, shooting for. Again, just to look like segmentation. Too many, too shiny, and too few. Um, it doesn't look like segments, body segments. So I like to take that extra wrap around the uh, in front of where it's dubbed. And I think, again, that wraps in a little tighter. Makes it a little easier to uh, helicopter off the waist. So we'll change angles here so we get a, a good view and a good angle to kind of do that helicopter and break the wire. So this is a flashback. And the next material going in is that uh, medium pearly mylar. There's something about that that pink and 
pearly look, it, it takes on a different color and characteristic um, depending on what you're wrapping it or what it's wrapping over or folding over. So I'll get the end in the material clip. And snip off the excess. And the original plan was going to just nick it and tear it. And I gave up on that pretty quick and just snipped it off. Again, that's going to be covered up. And this is gray, super fine dubbing. And feel free to substitute. Uh, I'm sure rabbit fur in various colors would work just fine here and uh, you know, pull out any guard hairs. Uh, I don't think on these smaller flies the guard hairs uh, do us much good. And we want a little bulbous but um, tapered if we can thorax. And again not wrap too tight so that I can un undo the end of that. That's a long stapled dubbing and we trim that almost like yarn. Now that we trimmed a little closer because there's not as much to cover it up. Now here's a little uh, point I want to make I guess. Um, I'm going to use that hackle here for the legs and the reason is um, I think these little tiny hackles uh, work much better in terms of um, as we get smaller in hook size. So, I mean, you could do a pinch of um, partridge fibers or something on each side or, um, you know, some, some way. And it works pretty well in the larger flies. You can get in there and get a hold of them. Um, I struggle with that. So, I think you just need a wisp of something on the small flies. Again, this is a size 18, but we could go all the way down to 20 or 24. And there I came in and I left a stub there. I didn't mean to. So, I had to come back with a finer point scissors and clean that up. And keep in mind, I I left uh, enough room to wrap the hackle and then still have uh, room for a good size head. And we're going to shoot for two to three turns. These these fibers are pretty fine, so um, three turns, something like that, should be enough. Two and a half. I think I ended on top till the vise so that I had a better angle and can cross my thread and take a wrap to hold it in place. And I kind of trapped more fibers facing forward than I meant to, but some of these you can't even see until they are on camera. So I'll we'll clean that up, pinch and push it back a little bit. And I want to get my thread all the way up to just behind the eye. Because when I pull the mylar forward, I'm going to have to give it a spin here and tighten things up. When I pull the mylar forward, I want to wrap up there to hold it down, but then fold it back over, wrap over it a couple of turns. And that'll kind of force us to have a little bigger um, head on this fly than you might have on a tiny, tiny hook on a different pattern. But I think that's part of it. It's actually one of the characteristics I think we go for. It's, it's probably a lot like the natural. Now there, I snipped that longer piece off to get out of the way while we trim some fibers. It was a little wasteful. I think I was about to snip that and I realized it was coming from behind the eye or behind the head. So I pushed it back rather than cut it off. So I'm going to whip finish first. If I pulled that mylar up and started to cut at it, I was afraid I was going to loosen all those wraps and they were just going to slide down, collapse against the eye of the hook and and kind of make a mess. I'll we'll trim the excess thread out of the way. And 
and now it's okay to get in there and kind of search down to the bottom of that mylar and snip it off. A little piece there won't hurt. In the end, I have a, a little bulb of uh, Sally Hansen's on top. And there's one fiber there driving me crazy, so we'll kind of snip it out. Okay, so there we are with the uh, head smet in place. Somehow we lost a few frames, and you can see the needle come in and drop that, or put that drop on top, but that's the fly. On the left in the cork, you'll see the one that ended up being um, almost a gold rib ribbed version, and uh, I think they'll both fish well. But again, in smaller sizes, and uh, on the right day, these are great flies. So thanks for watching, and... If you uh, want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. Until next time, be safe.